So this is the 23andMe data report. So we'll click on the Ancestry composition now. Just takes a second to load. Here we are. This is the map view. Uh, we could change that to split view, which isn't available to me at the moment. I uh, need to be showing at least one parent. And the uh, chromosome view as well, uh, which shows the breakdown of your chromosomes from, uh, from different regions. So you can uh, highlight each one. It shows you on the chromosome view exactly where which ones matched which. On the map view, this is the one I find most interesting. Uh, it's a great little kind of way of showing where your uh, your ancestry history comes from. European in general makes up 99.9% .9 of my ancestry. There's none from anywhere else actually. Um, so yeah, this is the uh, the breakdown of Northern Europe. Broadly, Northern Europe is 24.7%. We've got Eastern European and broadly European. Uh, there's a 0.1% unassigned and it makes 100% me. So. Let's click on here. We can uh, we can take it down to smoother kind of like larger groups and uh, have less detail. But we're looking at the speculative detail at the moment, so we'll put it on standard and see how that changes. So now I'm 99.6% European. Um, so yeah, I've got I'm 0.4% unassigned now. I'm still 100% me though, which is good. And um, we'll click on conservative, and now uh, it changes to. Probably European is 29.3, and I am 1.5% unassigned. We can click on this, and it shows all the possible populations that it compares you to. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty much all just European, really. Um, even when we look at speculative, I, uh, I'm still 0% in pretty much everything, apart from European. So, yes, that's the ancestry comparisons for you there. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's, I mean, it's 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 not exactly much use really. The um, there's a lot of information that it, it neglects to tell you that you need to know in terms of population genetics. I'll hopefully, get to go through that in a um, in a further video. But this this starts going into more information about the T2A1A uh, matrilineal line. It shows where the subgroup of this T2 is common around the world. And uh, this so yeah, we'll click on the history here, and it shows that I'm related to well, <laughs> uh, that sorry Jesse James had uh, the same two T two group. Um, so scroll through, and yeah, information here about the so this is a, a good example of how the subgroups uh, break out. You can see me there and uh, the relation to T2. So we'll look at my patrilineal line now. The R1, B1, B2, A1, A2, F so, <laughs> subgroup of the R1, B1, B2 haplogroup. This is um, kind of a, a bit of a, a bit of a strange mix, really. There's a, a, an awful lot in Europe, and yeah, it says there that my subgroup is most common in Ireland, which as you can probably guess by my surname is is actually you know it's pretty spot on in terms of my patrilineal uh, descent so um looking at that there that's a brief history of the haplogroup, group and um yeah so i was uh looks like i'm possibly descended from an irish king who ruled in the fourth and fifth century so i may or may not be irish royalty we will see well, we'll we'll never know actually. Um, here we are. So this is the community for the paternal haplogroup, and this is the, uh, the. Let's have a look at the Neanderthal ancestry. So looking at it, I am above average in terms of uh, Neanderthal. Um, I'm first amongst my friends, which seems to be lots of example people, and yeah, people who message me. Uh, so yeah, you can read more about Neanderthals and uh, what it means for your ancestry on there. And then there's the ancestry tools, which are very good uh, for explaining some of the uh, the science behind the ancestry tests on 23andMe. They don't tend to go into too much um, scientific detail. They do give a very good background, but um, you don't need a degree in genetics to to understand them. So we'll have a look at their health information now. This is the genetic risk factors. 
uh, originally all of these are hidden you have to uh, accept that you want to view them as we can see the uh, variant absent typical risks so you know pretty good news there really uh, variant absent in pretty much everything typical risk um, of course it means that you're not exactly immune to them um, you are still there's potential that you'll still suffer from some of them and then, then there's confidence. So the confidence is uh, how confident they are that, that these results are uh, are correct based on the research that's come beforehand. How many studies have been done? How many PISA people have been involved in the research? The size of the samples, etc. So looking at that, typical risks, you know, across the board, um, I'm pretty much fine there. Nothing to worry about particularly. You can have a look at the new and recently updated reports. So the latest updates are primarily to do with hair colour. Um, and uh, cilantro aversion. Um, so looking at that, I've got a less than one percent chance of having red hair, and yeah, warfare in um, increased sensitivity. Um, but uh, nothing really to to worry about there. And again, the recent post of the health group down there. So let's have a look at the next one: drug responses. Um, so these uh, aren't. I'm not particularly too too worried about any of these. I'm not taking any prescription medicines or anything like that. So I've got some interesting drug responses, but nothing to be concerned about at the moment, really. And inherited conditions. Again, a lot of variant absence on the side. You'll notice that, yeah, all of them pretty much variant absent. And let's have a look at traits. Got um, some. This is some of the interesting kind of uh, not not really very pertinent, but you know it's kind of fun to to know. I uh, I have a do not flush reaction to alcohol, so I don't tend to get red cheeked. Yep. So eye color likely blue. Not not quite right. Um, hair color straight on average again not right. Uh, muscle performance unlikely sprinter. Uh, thank you very much for that twenty three me. Um, I'm not the fastest person around, but you know I can hold my own. Um, looking at it, so now we start getting into the ones where they're feeling less confident. But there's there's all sorts of information there, and uh, photic sneeze reflex, lower odds. That's good to know. Um, so that's uh, that's the traits, and then onto the health tools again to work out your Reynolds score of uh, yeah. You, chance that you'll have a, a heart attack in the next 10 years uh, unfortunately I don't know my blood pressure um, or my cholesterol actually um, so I can't use those right now but uh, it's good that they're there so um, the the layout of 23andMe is very interesting this all very uh, all very well presented there's DNA relatives which I, I won't show you right now just don't want to uh, to disturb anyone's privacy by putting their name all over YouTube and um, there's some content as well explaining genetics and uh, the basic science behind uh, yeah where your genes come from and then there's of course the activity feed and some quick questions um, so let's have a quick go I haven't had a stammer nope uh, shows everyone else's results and then um, can you clap a time you must be yes submit answer there we are. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there's lots of questions that contribute to um, to 23andMe's research, um, and then you can fill them out or you can ignore them. You know, it's up to you. And you've got all the community stuff there, and uh, yeah, those are the 23andMe results. And with the magic of editing, I'll be able to swap over to the Prometheus results. So this is the Prometheus report. We've got here the uh, date that's generated, or the version, everything like that. 17,314 genotypes annotated, which is pretty impressive. So let's have a look at the good news. Uh, we've got some um, pretty pretty basically laid out information. Um, just got text, pretty much percentages. You can uh, you can see kind of the 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 reputation of the repute of the uh, the research is good for most of these. You can see the frequency it occurs in the population. Um, yep. And then, yeah, there's information there on <laughs> lower risk of male pattern baldness, which is good. And increased memory performance. Uh, I'm not quite sure about that. Let's have a look at that. Uh, so, click on more, and it comes up with the information 
to do with the actual study, the science behind it, uh, which is pretty good for, um, it explains, you know, kind of related straight away. It gives you a good breakdown of the research. We can do it again with cancer risk. Um, yeah, again there. So you can uh, you can have some uh, a quick look at the yeah the meta analysis of nineteen published studies. So the it's a lot easier to access the information on the uh, Prometheus results. I find uh, it's all taken from the back end of SNPedia, which is a wiki website where people put up all the findings from the latest genomic research. So let's have a look at the bad news now. So age-related macular degeneration. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so yeah, some interesting information there. If you feel like reading all of this, you are of course welcome to pause the video and read about everything that's wrong with me. Um, you've got a ten times increased risk of wet age-related macular degeneration there. Five times risk of thyroid cancer. Not the greatest news, but um, you know, at least you can read about the studies and uh, and better understand the information presented to you. Of course, a five times risk isn't exactly the end of the world uh, when you factor in how much at risk you are originally. Um, so yeah, slightly shorter lifespan there, not too fussed about that. Keep on scrolling down. What have we got? Uh, high risk of strokes. Less likely to live to 100. Uh, again, I'm, I'm pretty much okay with that. Study of five genes in 3,741 Japanese men. Okay, so you know you can actually look at the information behind it and and how they've come to the conclusion that that my genes are good or bad based on this. And it goes on. There's an awful lot of information. Uh, increased risk of heart disease, uh, increased risk of hypertension, <laughs> greater risk of developing restless leg syndrome. Um, I'm actually wobbling my legs right now, so that's that's pretty apt. Okay, well, yeah, there's an awful lot in there. Let's close the bad news and have a look at um, what's interesting. Um, okay, so I am male. That's uh, interesting to know. Um, Got the ancestry information there, Y chromosome paternal ancestry, blah, 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 blah. okay. Um, oh, interesting data quality warning. Some of the data claims that you have two Y chromosomes in particular is claiming heterozygoty. Right, um, that's interesting. Uh, originally from, yeah, seen it a lot in 23andMe data, so it implies that some of the 23andMe raw data is actually wrong. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, looking on early riser, yeah, that's, yeah, pretty, pretty spot on. Um, lower HDL cholesterol. Uh, like I said, I don't actually know my cholesterol, so uh, I should probably get that checked out. So looking at that, there's all sorts of um, things available there. Unlike the 23andMe report as well, you can also have a look at the incredibly detailed, what they call the complicated report. Um, so inside here is even more complicated. We're starting to look at the ethnicity, so we click on that. And it's got all of the genotypes that occur. And then we can have a look at, yeah, past the easy stuff, uh, we can look in the deep magic, uh, the genotype. Uh, so these are the things that I have in common more than 33% of the time with uh, people in my ethnicity. So, yeah, this is all very interesting. Like I said, it's it's very complicated stuff, and this is the kind of thing that's uh, it's not exactly been analysed, and um, and there's ways of getting help to read all of this stuff. Um, yes, and here we are. This is um, we know how frequent these are, which is helpful. But these SMPs are particularly prone to confusion in the literature, and, and they may be orientated differently on different microarrays. They may require different interpretations from Navit Genetics and Twenty Three and Me. So this is. Um, Interesting. It's uh, it explains how different the results can be you know, can come from different microarrays and different companies. So yeah, your results from Navit Genetics may be completely different to to those of Twenty Three and Me customers, and um, that's that's interesting. It, it kind of highlights that your genetic results are a, a product of the the company that you choose. Really, it's uh, and the science that they use. 
it goes to show just based based on the the, the ways that the reports are, are put together the difference between um, between how you can end up understanding and reading and interpreting your genome is purely based on uh, on on you know what you're looking for if you're if you're happy using a 23 and me's basic interpretation then um, that's fine no problem at all but if you if you want more detailed uh, information then you end up looking at prometheus and and have a much greater insight into into you know an understanding of your genome and a, a better understanding of the risks involved as well and how the studies and the research behind genetics actually are put together and digested by companies that analyze your genome so that's pretty much all for today that's uh, kind of a, a whistle stop tour through my genome uh, it's a longer video than I expected and well done if you managed to get to the end uh, I am currently researching on 23andMe I'm interested in building an understanding of how people relate to and interpret their genome based on the way that they use that company uh, if you'd like to get involved there are links in the description below if you'd like to follow my research as well there's links to my blog and if you have any questions at all please get in touch my contact information is on there or you can leave a comment below thank you very much and have a great day